Good morning everyone, welcome back to another Tinkercad tutorial. Today we're going to follow along a short tutorial to make a honeycomb grid pattern that looks something like what you can see on your screen right now. Um, to do that I'm going to jump right into Tinkercad. Once you log into Tinkercad you can see your dashboard here and we need to click on code blocks. Open that one up and we need to create a new code block, just the option at the top there. Uh, from here, we're not interested in doing the tutorials anymore. These activities here, intro to shapes, moving shapes and rotating shapes, you should have done them already. Um, what we are interested in doing is a new design. And here it is here. So there are four main object groups that we need to create. We need to create the honeycomb base, cluster one, cluster two and cluster three. I'm going to just jump right into creating a new object. Now, if you remember from the last time, the create new object is found in the modify part of this menu so you can scroll down to get modify or the coloured circles at the side you can press on them and then just drag in create new object now that's automatically called object zero um, and we need to change the name of object zero so we press on where it says object zero rename variable and we can type something in here like honeycomb base and then OK. And you can see if we come down to the data section, we have honeycomb base just in here. Now, time to add in some code. Same thing as last time. We start off by adding a comment in and then we need to add in a shape. We need to do some modifications to that shape, like changing the scale and moving it. Then we need to add another shape, change the scale and move it again and finally make that whole thing a group. So we'll start off by adding in a bit of markup. And we can drag in the comment straight underneath create new object. And in here we can type what we're going to be creating. So here we'll create two polygons. One solid and one whole. And these will form the base of the honeycomb. Press return on that to get it away. And you can even zoom out a touch to make all your code fit in. The next thing we need to do is add a shape. So I'm just going to, instead of scrolling, I'm just going to jump right up to shapes. And we need a polygon just here. Let's drag this under our code blocks and then press the arrow to edit that. We need six sides, edge zero and one for now. That's all fine. And we can come down to modify and take in scale and a move also. Next thing to do is add in another polygon. If we drag it right under there. And we need to add in a scale and a move again. And one other thing which is create group. It's just the bottom option in the purple tab. Next, to change some values. So here you can see the first block of your honeycomb comb. We need to change the scale, the first scale here. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see this. It makes it easier to press as well. Scale on the x-axis for the first polygon will be 1.15. And the scale on the y is 1. Scale on the z-axis, we will make that 0.1. Move on the x-axis, it's 0. Y-axis will be 0 as well. And on the z-axis, we're going to move it 1. Coming down to the scale for the second one, what we need to do on this shape here is, in fact, make that a hole. So we can do that by pressing on the, the grey striped circle. We'll make that whole and we'll change the scale here to 1.05. Y will be point, uh, 0 0.9 and Z will also be 0 0.9. And for the move on this one, we'll keep the X and Y the same, but we'll change the Z to 1. Let's hide the keyboard and press play, see what happens there. There we go. That looks pretty much like the first step complete. Next thing we need to do is create cluster 1. So what this is going to do 
is create a new object and it'll add in copies of that object to make a three hexagon cluster and then we can use that to copy down so how we do this just find a new space at the bottom here we need to create new object always add in a comment under create new object to show what you're doing and this will be a group of three hexagon shapes the original is deleted so what we need in here now is add copy of object so back up to purple add copy of object and then add copy of object we need this object to be honeycomb base so way down in the data section we can drag in honeycomb base to there before we add in the honeycomb base we can change the name of this object to cluster one cluster one and now we should be able to drag in honeycomb base and it should snap in there if you're having trouble adding in the honeycomb base object if you drag it over the stripy circle you can see that goes white the, the, so we can drag that in there and it just clicks right in and then delete object honeycomb base there now to change some values we need to move on the x negative 9.5 on the y-axis we need to move 14 and on the z-axis 0, that's fine. So for the second copy of the object we need to move on the x-axis 9.5 and 14 on the y and 0 on the z-axis. So if I hit the keyboard now we should have a look at what we're doing by pressing the play button. There we go, it's copied it over and it's deleted out the original. So there we have cluster number one. Next thing to do, scroll down slightly and we can add in cluster two. So same as before, modify, create new object, drag that in, change the name of that right away, rename variable, and call this one cluster two. Cluster two, okay. And add in a comment to see what we're doing. In this section, we're going to make five copies of cluster one. And move them into place. And delete the original again. Okay, now to drag in some code blocks. We need to add copy of object, so back up to purple, add copy of object, drag that in there. Now we need math, which is create variable, and we're going to change the name of that to distance y, which will be assigned the value of negative 28.5, so that's going to move the whole copy, the, that whole cluster one, it's going to move that down 28.25 millimeters. So we need in a create variable. And we also need to repeat that four more times. So up to control and drag in a repeat. And inside that repeat, we're going to go to modify and add copy of object. Drag that in there and we need to move it. So drag a move underneath. And we also need to change the distance. So change item by negative 28.5. That just moves it all down. Next thing we can do is create a group. So back up to purple, Let's create a group, and then delete object to delete the original out. And that's all the code done. We've achieved here what we've said in the comments. In this section, we are creating five, uh, sorry, we're going to create four copies, and then we're going to delete out the original one. So add copy of object, first of all, that's going to be cluster one. So I'll drag that in to cluster one. We need to rename the variable and call that distance y or distancy. And we need to change that 
zero up here to be negative 28.25. The keyboard. We're going to repeat this four times and to repeat we need to add in a copy of cluster 1 again move x0 and the distance y variable over here you can drag that in to the y circle to make the y equal 28.5 and what that's going to do is when we change distance y by negative 28.5 sorry negative 28.25 that's going to add on the negative 28.25 to the original value and it's going to keep a wee record of what that value is in distance y finally we'll need to create the group and then delete the object so that looks all good all fine just now let's press play to run through the whole code and here we're copying it out and deleting the original one and we're going to copy out the whole thing and move it down 28.25 and we go nice and tight no gaps let's come right off the page but that looks absolutely perfect so the final thing we need to do is copy this whole pattern over to the right hand side. So let's start off again, create a new object and then pop in a comment from the markup menu, new comment. And then here we're going to create a copy of cluster two. And we're going to repeat it out four times to create the grid. So first of all, we'll need to create a variable. Let's drag that in here. And then we will need to add a copy of object. So up to purple, add copy of object. And then we'll need to add a repeat in here. So down to control, repeat, and inside this repeat, we're going to have the same as last time. So instead of it being cluster one, we're going to call that cluster two. So we need to add copy of object into here. And then we need to move that object on the X axis this time, move. And then we need to change the distance. So the variable distance x that we're about to create is going to be changed. And then finally we need to create a group from all this. And then delete object. That's it there. So let's go ahead and change the names of some of these. This variable will be called distance x. Distance x. this the value one and inside here let's repeat this four times and we need to add a copy of the object so back down to data this is going to be cluster two going in there we should change the name of this object to cluster three add a copy of cluster two into your repeat and we're going to change distance x Drag that in there, change that by one, and then delete out cluster two. So let's have a replay of that and see what works. Okay, so it looks like there it's copying out the pattern. 
However, instead of moving it over, we'll need to change the X distance. So to change the distance over, let's skip a, skip a couple of steps by pressing this next button. And we can zoom in and measure out the distance from left to right. So a wee bit of problem solving here. So coming from the very left hand edge of this hexagon, we'll call that zero and then count the big boxes as 10. So it comes across 10, 20 to the other side. So we can change this size here to 20 and then change distance X by 20 there as well. Now, if I zoom out and play this again, it zooms through the whole pattern. What's happened there? It zooms through the whole pattern because I've got it set quickly and we have a nice honeycomb pattern. Now, something we can do right now is change the color of this, make it a nice honeycomb color. Let's play it out again. And it changes the colour at the end. Lovely honey colour. That's it for this tutorial folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one.